Beavis and Butthead are not role models. They're not even human. They're cartoons. Their cartoon show was also a staple of 1990s animation. The show focuses on two teenage morons whose lives pretty much revolve around music videos, chicks, and nachos. Although their luck with the ladies is understandably nil. It was quite polarizing. Either you loved it or you hated it. Personally, I thought it was hilarious, and just another example of creator Mike Judge's ability to cleverly use a vessel to combine humor with social commentary without being pretentious about it. In 1994, a video game was released for the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis. Both versions follow the same plot, but are completely different from each other. Similar to Aladdin, which I reviewed recently, the two versions were developed by different companies. Real Time Associates did the SNES version, while Radical Entertainment did the Genesis version. And like the Aladdin video, I'll be reviewing the Genesis version simply because that's the one that I'm more familiar with. So the premise is that the band War is coming to town, and being huge fans, our heroes decide to go. They actually buy the tickets legit, until Tom Anderson's dog snatches the tickets out of their hands, swallows them, pukes them out, and then Anderson runs the tickets over with his lawnmower, scattering the pieces of them everywhere. And by everywhere, I mean all over Tarnation, because they end up in the possession of random people inside somebody's laundry and in a birdcage, for example. There's no rhyme or reason for any of it, but whatever. The goal is to collect the ticket pieces that are scattered all over town and make it to the concert. From the couch of whoever's house this duo always hangs out at, you use the TV as a means of navigating your way around various stages, where you have to find items to solve puzzles that lead you to the ticket pieces. There are nine pieces total and seven stages, including the concert itself, and not counting the house, which is your main hub. You can play as either Beavis or Butthead and switch off between the two at any point. Whichever one you're not controlling will follow you around and won't help you in any way, but they also won't take any damage, thankfully, as each character has his own health meter. So it's wise to wait until one player's health is drained low before switching off. Health can be regained by eating burritos or burgers that are dropped by enemies you defeat, although you can really make the argument that this sideways burger is actually a hot dog. I tend to fall back on burgers due to the tie-in of these guys working at Burger World, but I can't confirm or deny. You can also play a two-player co-op, which is more fun, but it also can be more problematic as you have to be on the same page, and you can't fall back on the whole wait for your health to drain and switch off shortcut. To ward off enemies, you've got deadly burps as Beavis or farts as Butthead. Beavis's attack doesn't have quite as much range, but as Butthead, you have to turn to face the other way first, giving you a little less reaction time. You can upgrade to other weapons like a spitball shooter with a straw, a bat for slow but powerful clubbing, and a toy gun that sends rapid fire projectiles. The enemies have predictable patterns, and they're very generous with leaving behind health. In fact, they'll leave one every single time you kill them. But they do respawn every time you walk off screen, so, for example, these security guards that swing their nightsticks at you, if you back up to give yourself some distance to attack, you might end up running into another guard in the exact same spot just because you backed up a little bit. This makes certain areas tedious if you fall into this trap. Pausing the game at any point will bring up your menu where you can toggle between which character you're controlling if you're playing in one player mode, which weapon or item you want to equip, you have the option to drop an item, since you have a max of four items per character, and picking the sucks option exits the stage immediately and sends you back to the living room. The problem with the sucks option is that if you do this, all your items get taken away and put back into the original location. So as long as you keep your more recent checkpoint saved via password, it's almost certainly not worth using this option. Regarding your equipped items, you'll need to leave the desired item selected to use it. For example, if you want to unlock this shed with the key, you'll need to have the key selected in the menu or you won't open it. Money, however, is spent automatically upon picking up the item, which is kind of bullshit because not all items that require purchasing will have any kind of visible price tag, and there's no are you sure you want to buy this prompt that would have been useful. Not only that, but the even bigger load of bullshit is how making certain choices can prevent you from advancing any farther. 
So the drive-in is a stage where you need $3 to get in. Most of your money comes from pawning off otherwise useless items at the pawn shop in the mall. If you spend too much money early on, there'll be no way for you to save up any more to get into the drive-in, and you're fucked. Now there is a pair of binoculars in the drive-in that you can pawn off for more money and enable you to buy all the available items, but the fact that you can overspend and there's no way out of it, and also no way for you to even know that this is the case and you're forced to wander around aimlessly wasting your time is pretty fucked up. Also some of the puzzles are a bit cryptic. Like this passcode you have to enter to get through the employee's only door at Burger World. You have to spell out butthead using the alphanumeric keys. Now that's not entirely cryptic, but there are no clues throughout the game to hint to you that your actual name works as the entry. It's something that they really should have added, especially since there are other clues that are way less useful. Also there are automatic deaths in certain areas if you make the wrong decision. Like picking up this document gets you murdered by this guy. You have to incapacitate him. But there's no way you would have known that the first time through. There are other trial and error instances like this that are pretty cheap as well. So yeah, the game has some sloppy design, but there are a lot of positives as well. For one thing, the game is very pleasing to the eyes and ears. Radical did as great a job at emulating the cartoon as they possibly could on the console. Not just Beavis and Butthead, but all the other characters and the town of Highland all look just like their cartoon counterparts. And there are plenty of well done voice samples of Beavis and Butthead cracking jokes or just making noises from taking hits. And that distinct guitar distortion from the Genesis serves well to the guitar driven rock soundtrack, further enhancing the whole B&B experience. The controls, while not perfect, are also well done. And in general, the whole scavenger hunt deal is pretty fun. While there are indeed flaws in the gameplay that I had previously mentioned, it's still more than playable, especially if you're a fan of the show. So you start the game off in the living room. Inside the couch, you can find three items right away. A donut, a pizza, and a cassette player. Drop all three of them on the floor, or just wait until later. You won't need them for a while. Grab the remote off the end table and head into the bedroom. Grab the pants off the floor and there's a camera in the drawer which you'll need later. On the wall is the Guar poster where you'll deposit the ticket pieces after collecting them and you'll get your updated password to enter, as well as access to the options menu in case you want to toggle one or two players or enter a password. So now head to the TV and use the remote to select your stage. First, choose Burger World. Watch out for skateboards that roll across the street and Todd who walked back and forth spraying oil at you. Burp a fart at him until he's dead and collect the food that he drops. Enter the restaurant and you'll see an angry customer waiting for service. Head around to the back of the building and go all the way to the back to the dumpster area. Avoid the rats and grab the dead rat and the straw on the ground and avoid this green burger for now. If you eat it, it'll make you sick and you'll start gradually losing health. Go back to the side of the building and watch out for the chick that swipes. Jump when she doesn't swing. You can't wipe her out with burps or farts or anything. Enter the employee's only door where you'll need to enter passcode 2888-84323, which spells out butthead as mentioned earlier. When you're inside, grab the headset and fries. Toss the fries in the fryer, and then toss the rat in right after. This will give you a box of fries with a surprise dead rat in it that you can grab and bring out to the angry customer, who gives you money, eats the fries with the rat, and then hurls it all back out onto the floor. For some reason or another, he vomits a ticket piece too. Or maybe it fell out of his shirt pocket, I don't know. Go back, grab the ticket, and head back to the exit. Remember that you need the remote equipped to exit the stage too. Drop off the ticket piece on the poster, and since you'll have gotten 50 cents from that guy, it's time to spend a little money. So head to the Turbo Mall. Kill security guards at the entrance that take wild swings at you. Fill them full of gas and pick up the food. They'll always drop health, so this is a decent spot to farm up. Enter the mall and go into the pet shop. If you try to grab the key, the shop owner will cut you off. 
So buy the snake in the tank, which will cost you 50 cents. Bring the snake to the shop owner. He'll package the snake so it doesn't escape. While he's distracted, grab the key, and then take the packaged snake. Go back and use the key on the bird cage. It'll fly out and try to drop eggs on you, but there's a ticket piece, so grab it quickly and run out. If you don't happen to grab the key while the shop owner is packaging up the snake, you can always bring it back to him and he'll do the repackaging all over again. Jump over shopping carts in this hallway, and don't worry about the laundromat right now. It's blockaded by this asshole who says that you have no reason to do laundry. Enter the auto parts store, kill Todd, and grab the oil sample off the shelf here. Bypass the toy store, and enter the yogurt shop where the worker starts throwing shit because you made a mess the last time while making a mess himself. Run past him when there's a gap, grab the straw off the table, head into the bathroom, and grab the bar of soap off the sink. There's a toilet in here too, which is optional later on, but I'll get into that later. Go back out, go up the elevator, and watch out for this damn chick again. Jump over bowling balls that roll across the floor, and enter the recruit center. If you try to pick up this confidential file, this guy will capture you immediately, and it's game over. But if you grab the bomb off the shelf, it doesn't seem to bother him. Okay. What does bother him, though, besides grabbing classified documents, is snakes. So hand the snake over to him, and he'll freak out and cower. Now you can grab the document, which also reveals a ticket piece underneath. Grab that, too. Now you can use the bomb you just grabbed to blow up the toilet I mentioned earlier in the yogurt shop, and it'll leave a burrito for a health refill, because there's nothing quite like eating food out of the toilet. Now if you do use the bomb, you can go back to the recruit center at any time and get another one, because there is another bathroom, and there is another use for it outside of toilet bowls, which we'll get into later. For now, leave and talk to the pawn shop guy, where you can sell certain items for chump change. Most items he won't buy, but certain ones he will. Like, for example, the headset he'll buy for $2.80, so make that deal. Now go back downstairs, and just a reminder, do not enter the toy store. In fact, you may not want to even bother with this place at all. You can buy the toy gun and or the bat with the money you just earned, but like I mentioned earlier, this will fuck you up at this point of the game. There is a point later on when you can come back, but by then, you may not even want to. Anyway, head to the laundromat, and the guard will let you in since you've got the soap and dirty pants. Go to the machine at the far end, and use the oil to open it so the old lady can't hear you. If you don't use the oil, she wakes up and kills you immediately. Game over. Opening the machine reveals a ticket piece. Scoop it up. Now head back to the exit, and deposit your ticket pieces. You've gotten four out of nine, so you're almost halfway there already. Now on to the street stage. You could go to the hospital or high school, but I'll explain later why I'd go here first instead. Watch out for the skateboard, and this motherfucker Earl will fire at you. Take him out, or avoid him and head down to the other end of the street and enter the manhole. Now this sewer section is a bit of a pain in the ass. There's a burger where you first enter, but leave that alone for now. You'll need to jump over all these pits of sewage and shit that drips out of the pipes or spurts out from underneath. Before each jump, size up what's in front of you and jump when an opening presents itself. Just watch out for the rats on the floor too. When you get to the ladder going back up, there'll be two health items. Grab them if you've taken some hits, pick up the bird off the ground here, and head up north into the junkyard. Grab the toy gun and continue right jumping over these puddles of spilled green shit, rats, and avoiding shit from above like these asshole birds that you can't kill. Watch out for them too when you jump over the puddles, because the birds will be in your way. Use the tire to bounce up and grab the burrito, and don't pick up the boot, it's a waste of space. Keep jumping the hazards, kill Todd, and grab the bone at the end. Head back through the junkyard, and then the sewer, and grab the burger you left behind earlier. Go back up, enter the yard, and you've got a boss battle with Mr. Anderson. He'll throw beer cans at you and drive around on his lawnmower. But if you equip the gun, you'll be able to easily lay waste to him. After he passes out, grab the key off of him and head to the backyard. The prick dog that fucked up your tickets will get loose and chew your face apart. 
but if you have the bone equipped, you'll toss it and get the dog out of your way. Use the key to unlock the shed and grab the fishing rod. And as Beavis, grab the chainsaw. It won't let you take it as butthead. Now head back out and use the chainsaw on the tree. Although you have to line up in a very specific spot. And keep the button held down or you might withdraw too early. You'll cut the tree down and get another ticket piece. Head back out to the exit and drop the ticket piece off. Now you can do some couch fishing. Use the fishing rod on the couch. Select an item to use as bait and you'll cast a line out the window. Most items won't work, and Butthead will let you know that the bait sucks. But if it's a good bait, you'll have to mash the C button rapidly to reel in your catch. The pizza slice will reel in a cat. Pick that up. The donut will catch a security guard who you can kill for a health item like usual. The confidential document will catch Daria, who will tell you that important things get stuck to gum. The cassette player will catch Stuart, who tells you that there's a way to get closer to Guar. And the most important bait is the gum, which you don't have yet, but when you do, it'll give you a ticket piece. The least important bait is the boot, which will bring out Earl, who won't take any damage and kill you instantly. Game over right there on the spot. This is why the pawn shop guy tells you that he wouldn't use that boot for anything. So I guess maybe this is tied for most important, because it's really important that you don't use it. So now head back to the TV and go to the Highland High School. The stage is a continuous hallway with a shit ton of Earls that fire at you. Kill them quickly with the gun, which is why you wanted to do the street level first. Most of the classroom doors you can't go into. The ones with pictures on the outside of the door though, you can. Watch out for skateboards and enter room 102. Coach Buzzcut operates this weird machine that fires electric balls at you. You want to get the A and B chemicals on the desk, but it's impossible while Buzzcut is capacitated. To get him stunned, stand close by him and unleash burps or farts to get him momentarily dazed, and quickly pick up both chemicals. It doesn't take long for him to regain his composure, and if he does, go back to work on him with your gas. Bullets won't work on him. You will take a few hits here, so feel free to grab health from the Earls out in the hallway if you have to. Once you have the chemicals, go back out and continue down the hallway. Watch out for the chicks, skateboards, and earls, and enter room 108. Van Driesen will give you subtle hints like you'd be surprised who's afraid of snakes, or a soda will make the floor slippery, or something along those lines depending on where you are in the game. But don't worry about that. Grab the gum on the floor under his desk, which you'll use to get the ticket and the couch fishing later on, and head back out and press on. Enter the restroom if you have a bomb and want to blow up a toilet for some help. Shortly after that is Principal McVicker's office. A ticket piece will land on his head, but you can't grab it directly. You need to knock his ass out, which won't happen with burps, farts, or bullets. Instead, you'll need to take the mixed chemicals, which the blackboard specifically told you not to do, and present them to McVicker, who promptly passes out, and you're now able to get the ticket piece. Now leave, head back home, catch the ticket with the gum, and drop off the ticket pieces. Now go back to the mall, sell the bird, and now you'll have more than the $3 necessary to enter the drive-in. If you don't have a bomb in your inventory, stop in the recruit center to get one, and then head back to the exit. Make sure you have the camera in your inventory, and pick the drive-in stage. Although you can go to the hospital stage first, it doesn't really matter at this point, but I'll show the drive-in stage first. Pay the guy at the ticket office and head in. There's a restroom here in case you want to blow up a toilet, but then you'll need to go back to the mall and get another bomb because you need it for something else in this stage. In fact, you're going to want to use it right away in the snack bar. Blow the damn thing up and you'll flood the place with soda. Now head back out, continue right, and head through the parking lot. These puddles are slippery, but they won't do any damage. So just avoid the rats, and when you get to the end, grab the binoculars, and use the camera to take a picture of the people banging in the car. This angry chick will come running out and start chasing you, grabbing a hold of you and inflicting damage. Run back to the beginning, jump over the puddles, and lead her back to the snack bar, where she'll slip on the soda and fall flat on her face, and drop a ticket piece. Grab it, and head back to the living room to drop the piece off, and you only need one more. 
Now you have the option to pawn off the binoculars at the mall, which will give you enough money to buy the bat and the second gun at the toy store, but at this point, there's not a whole lot of reason to bother with it. Now before you go to the hospital, you're going to want to get sick. I know, this sounds weird. Head back to Burger World and eat that green burger by the dumpster, and now you're sick. Now go back to the exit and go to the hospital. There are a couple security guards and skateboards and shit before the entrance. When you get in, head into this room, which you won't be allowed inside without being sick. The doctor will diagnose you with acute burgeritis and give you the antidote, which will max out both players' health. But more importantly, you now have access to the scissors up on this shelf. Climb onto the table to get it. Now head back and continue through the hospital. This prick will toss stuff at you. Stand back, hit him with the gun, and then hop on this car. You'll start riding through the hospital, and for whatever reason, this bastard that was running on the treadmill earlier starts chasing you down. If he catches up to you, he'll squash you and it's game over. He'll only get closer if you smash into one of these med kits. He'll draw a little closer each time. He'll also start to drift a little further away if you don't get hit for a bit. Basically, you just have to react well to what's in front of you. Avoid the obstacles, and when you get to the end, you'll all go crashing down the stairs. The big cowboy bastard gets laid out, and the last ticket piece is on the floor. Grab it, and the exit is just ahead. So now the only real practical reason for doing the hospital after the street stage is so you can have the gun and it's easier to kill this guy. But other than that, it's really just a matter of whether or not you want to do the biggest pain in the ass of the game at the beginning or the end. You can do this at any time really. So now bring the ticket piece back, grab the full tickets off the poster. You'll want to be standing kind of sideways against it so you don't activate the password screen. Once you've got the tickets in hand, head to the Guar concert. The guy will let you in, and you just have to walk through the door, and you get a cutscene of Beavis and Butthead jamming out to the show. But the game tells you that you still can get to the band, as was hinted earlier by Stuart, and the credits roll. So this was the less good ending. To get the for real good ending, make sure you have the cat and scissors in your inventory, and when you get to the main entrance, keep walking by. Make sure the cat is equipped, and when the damn dog comes back to try to rip your face apart, you'll toss the cat, and the dog will chase after it instead. But you're not done yet. You've got like two dozen of these fucking bouncers that come in two at a time trying to murder you. Use the gun on them. They're not particularly difficult, but they take a lot of hits, and there are a butt-ton of them. It's a very tedious section of the game. I mean, look at this shit. It's sped up. And look how long it's taking me to finish it. When you finally get to the end and enter the backstage door, there's one more bouncer that throws bananas at you. The only way to get by him is to cut the rope with the scissors and a sandbag will drop onto him. They won't let you on stage without any costumes. So grab them off the floor here and head onto the stage where you can control Beavis and Butthead around on stage and throw yourself onto the floor while dressed as a BDSM slave and the credits roll. And that wraps up this game, and wraps up another edition of Aqualung's Game Reviews. See you next time.